Okay. Uh, this video is going to go over the McSweeney's 2003 catalog. Just completely lucked into this, doing essentially a couple of random searches on Abe, found something that looked odd. The listing, it, it read like it might be a catalog, but I really wasn't quite sure what it was. And I uh, emailed the guy and he sent back uh, that it was in fact a catalog. It was the 2003 McSweeney's catalog. Uh, I don't think it was ever been used. Uh, it's in excellent condition. Uh, great cover. The interior pages are just about perfect. Uh, got two pro small problems. At some point, and you can't see it on the video, at some point it got crimped in the bottom four corner. It took a crimp and it goes through cover to cover. It goes through, it goes through the entire, entire book. You can't really see it as much as you can feel it. And the back cover should be all white and there's a bit of brown stain. And the video makes it look much worse than it is. It's not, it's really not nearly as brown as the video looks. It looks to me like maybe a, a little splash of, of coffee or cola or something. Um, is kind is kind of is kind of my guess. So the back cover has some staining, but it's not nearly as bad as it looks on the on on the video. And another reason I think that it was never used, never read, never anything is it includes apparently all of the ephemera that went inside it. Um, there were three pieces of ephemera. One is a sticker of the McSweeney's logo, the McSweeney's chair, which is on the spine of every McSweeney's book. And it's the, the logo or the colophon used uh, on the copyright pages. Um, so a, a nice, perfect sticker of the McSweeney's chair. Also came with a pre-order slip printed on one side only, a pre-order slip for two very different books. Um, this one is William T. Volman, seven volume set, rising up and rising down. And this one is, is an odd kind of book. This is Giraffes, Giraffes. And it's the first book in the series uh, by Dr. and Mr. Doris Haggis on Way. Um, there are four books in this in this series now. And it's an ongoing series. The fifth book is coming out, uh, I believe, this year. So every few years they do one. Um, they're really neat, big, oversized, uh, fun, fun books. Also contains a distributor card with contact information uh, for different people at McSweeney's. You can see the McSweeney's chair up at the top there. And on the back, a few humorous comments of how to sell McSweeney's books in your bookstores. Um, a few little tips for how to sell the product. So all the inserts are present and the guy that owned the bookstore that got this, the bookstore was only a couple of, way, a couple of blocks away from McSweeney's. Uh, that's really all he knew about it is, is it just came in one day and he 
He had it for 12, 12 years before he sold it to me. And I've got uh, less than less than twenty dollars. Less than it was less than twenty dollars. I forget what it was. It was something just something under twenty dollars. Um, I'm not going to open it all the way because it's the only one I have, and who knows if I'll ever be able to get another one. The first catalog. Catalog one, uh, or it's called Sampler Number One. Uh, the first catalog was put out in 2000, and should be considered the 2001 catalog uh, because most of the books in the first catalog were published in 2001. So I'm missing the 2002 catalog. And I'm missing one of the 2004 catalogs. I believe there were two catalogs in 2004 because I do have one other. I have one for late 2004, early 2005, which indicates that there is another catalog for 2004 or for late 2003 early 2004, however they wound up designating that. Uh, so those are the two catalogs that I want most. The one right in front of this one and one right after this one are the two that I want most right now. Uh, starting from the back, where they are promoting the Believer magazine. which I have a complete set of the Believer magazines. I have pretty much stayed away from the Believer books imprint. There are 15 or 20 books in the Believer books and collecting that imprint, collecting a set of that imprint wouldn't be a big deal by itself. But there are so many branches on the McSweeney's tree, you can't go out on all of them. So I do have all of the Believer magazines. I've got like two of the Believer books, three of the Believer books. I do have the first one, and I do have the first one signed uh, by Nick Hornby. And then we have a, this is a reprint for the first three issues of McSweeney's. The first three issues were reprinted in 2002 and sold as a bundle of all three issues were bundled together. So this is a promo for the uh, second printing of the first three issues. Um, which I do have in shrink wrap. So I've got the ultimate there. Uh, next up is McSweeney's number four. That came in a box. Um, the first printing box, the box was uh, not very, not very uh, sturdy. <laughs> Had problems with the box. It did go to two printings on it. It's still in print. The uh, second printing is still in print. When they fixed the box, they did a massive second printing, and they're still selling it now. Um, the first printing box is fairly scarce. I do have several copies of it, and I do have a couple of copies of it still in shrink wrap. Next up is McSweeney's issue number five, the quarterly concern. Issue five of the quarterly concern. Um, issue five is one that I'm working on. It has four jacket variants and three 
uh, cover variants. So there are four books to a complete set. And I have a complete set. I'm trying to get three complete sets. I want a complete set signed and dated, contemporary to publication, and I have three of the four. And he signed, he signed more of the number five than probably all the other issues combined. After number five, mostly he really only signed his own books. And uh, he would happily sign a quarterly concern if you brought it to him at a signing. He would sign it. But after number five, he really did not sign a great number of quarterly concerns. Um, but he did a lot of sketches in those days. And so I'm trying to get all four signed with a sketch. I have three copies. Um, one of them is a duplicate, so I have two of the four. So I'm missing three books to complete my set, and the two, the two signed with sketches will be the hardest to, to find. This is the quarterly concern issue number six. This came in two title variants. This came shrink wrapped with the title card, the blue title card shrink wrapped over the uh, cloth, and it hid the title variant of the of the book. The book is the same, but it just had, for whatever reason, it had two title variants. Um, so I do have both title variants. I have one signed uh, contemporary to publication and I have one still in shrink wrap. McSweeney's number seven. This is uh, this has got nine booklets. I believe it's got seven seven saddle stitched staple booklets and two perfect bound booklets seven and two or eight and one I forget uh, the cover is uh, it's, just, it's 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 disbound so the cover is kinda like an artist's portfolio and the cover just kinda closes over it and it comes with a big wide rubber band to hold it all together and I do have that uh, signed and I just found totally by accident didn't even know they existed I just found one in shrink wrap I've never even seen a picture of one in shrink wrap didn't know they came shrink wrapped um, I literally just bought it a couple of days ago turned out to be in the hands of a prominent uh, bookseller in San Francisco and so I'm looking forward to uh, to that coming because I've never seen one. Didn't even know it was shrink wrapped. Some issues they did, some issues they didn't. McSweeney's number eight, the quarterly concern. I do have this sign. It's a very odd signature but I believe it's authentic. It's not like any other Egger's signature. His signature did vary. Uh, he signed by initial and date until he got famous and then he came up with the real signature um, and, he, and he settled very, he made a transition very quickly into the new style. He retained the date for a while so he signed in script and dated and then uh, in 2002 after You Shall Know Our Velocity came out and was a big hit during the time that he was signing for that book he dropped the date from his signature um, permanently 
So it was a fairly short time that he signed and script and dated. The signature on this number eight is not like anything I've seen. The guy I've got it from is a reputable bookseller. And uh, he got it from what he believes is a reputable bookseller. It's got a small little sketch and an odd little signature. Um, I'd like to know more about it. I believe it's likely authentic, but it is unique. Um, so I have a signed copy, I, I, I think. <laughs> uh, issue number nine of the Quarterly Concern was a paperback. I do have that signed. This one was also signed by William Bolrath which meant it cost more than I would have liked. This Bullrath signature is kind of pricey. Um, but I did finally come around to, to getting that. Issue number 10 of the uh, quarterly concern. The paperback and They got together with uh, Vintage Press, and the way they did this was McSweeney's issued to subscribers and customers, McSweeney's issued the McSweeney's edition, which is considered the first printing first edition, which I do have, and I do have signed. It's quite scarce, uh, quite scarce to find at all inexpensive not very many of them vintage published a paperback edition basically simultaneous to McSweeney's and they did a huge printing so all the bookstores that had issue number 10 had the vintage edition and that's pretty readily available. I have that also. Um, I have it signed. That's one that you want signed by uh, Michael Chabon because he was the editor of that issue. So really, in, in for issue 10, Chabon is the signature to have because it was really his, his issue. Uh, the UK edition published by Hamish Hamilton. Hamish Hamilton publishes all of the McSweeney's books in the UK. The UK edition was a hardcover and I, it's very hard to find. Uh, I do have two copies of it. I have one very nice, very nice copy. Um, and I really like the hardcover edition the best. I like the UK edition the best. Um, the second copy has some problems, um, which weren't, which wasn't disclosed, and I kind of didn't do so well on that. The book is actually in very good condition. Uh, front cover, back cover, excellent. Text block, excellent. I mean, everything about it is perfect, except uh, the spine was exposed to sunlight and the uh, color faded out of the lettering. The lettering on that copy has no color in it. It's entirely white because the sun took the color out of all of the lettering on the spine, which I didn't pay for that problem. I paid for a much better book. Um, but so I've got I've got I've got a I've got a really nice copy and I have what would be a really nice copy if you didn't know what was wrong with it. Okay, now we move into standalone titles. I'm going from the back to the front. So these are things that were already out. So this is Lemon, which I have. 
and I have signed uh, Lemon uh, Lawrence Krauser did a unique sketch for each of the first 10,000 copies a unique sketch for each cover of the book the cover is white with just a, a thin a thin little borderline but the cover is otherwise completely white so he did a sketch and he had a he had a stamp that said lemon and he would use lemon between zero and several times and then he would sign the book on the title page um, he admits he didn't quite make it to 10,000 copies he made it to like 8,800 copies um, and some copies slipped through unsigned they were supposed to all be signed and uh, some were some were not I've got three or four copies and a couple of them are not signed the remainder of the print run had just the plain white cover which is actually the hardest thing to find I've got a couple of those really nice that I got directly from McSweeney's that's the hardest thing to find the people that got the books with the sketches they took good care of them and they're out there they're easy to get they're inexpensive, in great condition. Um, the plain white, the plain white cover is actually the hard, the hard one, the hard, the hard one to get. The Neopolitan Anthology of American Literature. This was the first standalone title ever published by McSweeney's, and it's one of my favorites because he did really interesting inscriptions. He inscribed quite a few copies, and the inscriptions are, are some of them are pretty funny. So I, I have I have I think six now that are inscribed and that are pretty pretty funny. He also signed just his name Neil Pollock, and he sometimes signed his name Neil R Pollock. I have both versions of that. I've never seen an inscribed copy where he included his initial in the signature. Next up is The Shape We're In by Jonathan Lethem. I have this sign and his signature takes up the entire page from top to bottom. I, I, no exaggeration. The Pharmacist Mate by Amy Fuselman have this sign. It's a very mousy little signature. Uh, not much to look at really. Super Bad by Ben Greenman have that sign. He published just a couple of years later he published Super Worse. I don't know the story behind that. I have gotten a couple of copies of it. Um, have not found a signed copy. But I do have a couple of copies. Um, my understanding is that Super Worse is what he intended Super Bad to be. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what the story is on that. Um, but I'll come back around to researching that at, at some point. Samuel Johnson is Indignant by Lydia Davis. This came in two print states. There were two jackets. Uh, There's a slight color change on the jacket and they changed the blurbs on the back of the jacket. Um, I have both print states and both signed and she did not sign a lot of books uh, finding a, a, a nice signed copy is uh, a bit difficult to find and will be expensive when you find it um, 
the book itself, you can get a nice copy of the book for a reasonable amount of money, but not horrific. But uh, signed copies are, are hard to come by. The New Sins, Los Nuevos Pecados by David Byrne. This is designed in a Tet Besh format, uh, head to toe. Uh, the front cover is The New Sins. And then if you flip the book over head to toe, the back cover is actually the front cover of the Spanish translation. Um, I do have... I do have this. I do have this sign. It is very hard to find at all. Um, and finding a sign is also difficult and expensive. My image library suggests that uh, he probably would sign books for maybe three weeks or so and went back to England. So he probably did a promotional tour for the book for about three weeks, and that was it. The date he 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 dated his signature at the time, and all the signatures that I've got in my image library fall within about a three-week span. Uh, so it's not surprising that that is an expensive signature to get. Um, but it's a good one to invest in because there aren't, aren't very many of them. I think it was basically three weeks and that was it. Uh, he did do two more books with uh, Eggers. He and Eggers have had a long relationship. Uh, I do have both of the subsequent books. I by Stephen Dixon. It's a hardcover, and a hardcover is die cut. The eye and the period are die cut. Really neat cover. And then with an illustration, a full page illustration right behind the cover. And I was able to get a pretty good deal on this. And so I picked up two copies of this signed by both the author on the title page and the illustrator on the illustrated page. And that book should do well over time also. There can't be, there can't be that many of those. Uh, there, there's not that many signed, period. And signed by the illustrator also. Uh, you just don't you just don't see them. So I'm very fortunate. You shall know our velocity. This is Dave Eggers' second book, You Shall Know Our Velocity. His first bit his first book, a heartbreaking work of staggering genius, was a finalist for the Pulitzer. Huge success commercially. And this was a huge success also. Uh, I had this book is a first state and second state mixed with, there's a first edition slug on this title McSweeney sold to sold to subscribers and customers McSweeney's had 10,000 copies and they had the first edition slug so it's considered the first state first printing the other 40,000 copies went to the bookstores and all the all the other retail outlets and that is the second state of the first printing there was only one printing so it's first state and second state I do have both uh, both sign I have several copies I've got a couple dated I've got a couple with sketches um, I have a very nice set of this title I have the UK Advanced Uncorrected Proof. I have a first printing of the UK, still in shrink wrap. And I have a first printing of the UK signed. 
my understanding is there was not a U.S. advanced reading copy. That's unlikely to be true. I expect there was an advanced reading copy. Certainly there would have been proofs of a certain number of proofs at various stages. Um, I've never seen I've never seen one. The Middle Stories by Sheila Hetty. The Middle Stories is interesting. This is this was originally published in Canada in hardback. Sheila Hetty has a long relationship with McSweeney's. Originally published in hardcover in Canada. A year later, the paperback was released both in Canada and the United States. And in the U.S., McSweeney's had the paperback publication rights. But because of 9-11, some of the stories they didn't think were appropriate. And they self-censored. They took nine stories out of the book. And put in one new one. The Canadian edition is identical to the hardcover. The Canadians did not censor the paperback, uh, but McSweeney's did censor their paperback. Uh, this was released with, on the cover, is a photograph, and the photograph is pasted on. So it's a paste-on photo. And I believe there are four different photos. Can't prove there are only four, but feel pretty confident that there are four. I do have all four. And for the U.S. edition, Sheila Hetty and her friends had a defacing party. And they used black Sharpies, and they used whiteout, one or the other, and they defaced in some way, they defaced every single picture of every single copy in the print run. And so my goal is to have all four picture variants, which I have, and to have all four picture variants defaced in black Sharpie, which I have, and have all four variants to face with white out. And I have two of the four. Uh, the other two are going to be tough. When I was buying them to get copies, I could get, I could basically buy randomly because I was picking up on what I needed and I knew I could buy some number of copies and not have a lot of extra. And I wound up with a good mix. I've got three or four copies I need to sell. Three, four, I think four copies I need to sell. But I'm missing two of the variants to face with whiteout. Those could be hard to get. This book, when it comes up, everybody uses a stock picture. And the only way to find out what somebody has is to literally inquire copy by copy by copy, which I do, um, but that's a tough road to hoe. Getting those last two variants uh, of defacing uh, could take a very long time. This is Songbook by Nick Hornby. I do have this. I have this open and I also have one still in shrink wrap. I would like one signed but his signature on this book carries a stiff premium. Um, I do have his signature on a collection, an anthology he did, uh, first printed in uh, UK which I have that signed and then the U.S. release, 
I also have that sign. And the premium on those books with his signature is not that much. Those books are not that expensive. Uh, very good condition and sign. Uh, the songbook is, it includes a CD. It's about a $40 book, $30, $40. But if it's signed, it's more like 100 There's, there seems to be plenty of signed copies out there. There's there's never a problem finding copies to buy. But they're always 90 or or $100. And I haven't been able to bring myself to pay that kind of premium for a, for, a signed co for a signed copy of that. At some point, maybe the right one comes around. But my words consume me. A paperback paperback original very common book very easy to find it includes a CD very hard to find a nice copy you can find reading copies all day long not very expensive I have three or four copies and gave up trying to get a really nice one I've got a couple of decent good copies uh, but really nice copies are just about impossible to find. Uh, reading copies are very easy to find. English as she is spoke. This is the first title in the Collins imprint. And the Collins imprint is reprints of classic books. Uh, the Collins imprint is still going. They've it's 10 years later and they've only put out like six books or <laughs> seven books uh, they only put out a book every two two or three years uh, and that it that was the first one to Rublin and back the second book in the Collins imprint the second classic book reprint I do have this signed by the person that did the introduction for this edition for McSweeney's. So I have a beautiful uh, signed copy of this. Um, both of these titles are quite hard to find. I suspect they were printed in fairly small numbers because they expected fairly low demand and they're fairly hard. They're all of the Collins books, the earliest ones, very hard to find, very hard to find nice. Not necessarily all that expensive if you can find them. Um, but they can they can be tough to find. Marcel de Zama, the Berlin years. This is an art portfolio. It's got 30, what is it, 32 prints, I believe. Um, there's a booklet. There's a Dracula booklet, 30, 40 page booklet, uh, art booklet of Dracula. Um, and then there are the prints. And there are I want to say there are 32. I don't think it's saying saying here how many. Um, this first printing, 2003, very hard to find and very expensive. Uh, these go for in buying condition. They go for about $250. Um, never really on my radar that one was going to happen for me. They did a second printing in 2008, which is also very scarce. Um, but this first printing, Royal Books had, had one, and it was part of a consignment and it didn't sell 
and I was a I was able to get it at a fifty percent discount of what Royal Books was selling it for. They had it at three hundred dollars. The consignment didn't work out. It didn't sell, and the decision was made to to move it, and they cut the price to one hundred and fifty dollars, and that was a definite that was a definite buy. I I I took it. Uh, so I have a fine copy of that. Uh, paid one hundred and fifty dollars for it. Uh, it's worth about twice that to the right to the right buyer. This book here, McSweeney's, the best of the Internet tendency, 1998 to 2003. The Internet tendency is online. The McSweeney's website has a section called Internet Tendency, and they publish short little stories and... and they have like regular columnists kind of thing. Uh, so the internet tendency is kind of a, an online McSweeney's tends towards humor, tends towards short pieces. Um, some of the columnists are thematic. They choose new columnists every year. They'll they'll bring in four or five columnists, and you have your column for a year and Typically, it'll be thematic in some way. Um, this book, don't know what happened, but was not published. It was never published. Um, they did publish the best of the internet. This was supposed to be a paperback original. They did publish the best of the internet tendency in hardcover in 2014. So almost 10 years later, they published they published they published a best of McSweeney's internet tendency. Now, how this got so close to publication and then got killed. I don't know. I don't know. I not learned anything of that story. And one thing I have found, I haven't fully researched this yet. I'm pretty well into the research, but I haven't fully researched it. But beginning with this book and going all the way forward, all the ISBN numbers are wrong. The ISBN numbers are not only wrong, but the block the ISBN block doesn't even belong to McSweeney's it belongs to a PhD professor who self-published Greek children's books Greek grammar books uh, Greek history books strong focus on education uh, Searching this ISBN brings up this brings up a particular Greek book uh, for teaching pre-K the Greek alphabet, and uh, the ISBN isn't quite right. The ISBN is actually incorrect for that book, but that's what it'll bring you to if you look for it. And all of the all of the all of the books that follow here, all their upcoming titles, they're all using this ISBN block that never belonged to McSweeney's. I called, and it's, it's still a going concern. The this guy, I talked to the son. The father has written over 330 books, um, all based on. Greek alphabet, Greek grammar, Greek history, uh, Greek mythology, a uh, very strong educational angle is what they're at. And so but they have basically gone from a self-publisher of a couple of titles as a professor to a full-out 
full out press with they got two three hundred titles. Um, so I talked to the Sun and he confirmed that this ISBN block for all the books in the in the rest of this uh, catalog they, they they belong to them and always have. Uh, so I don't know what the story is of that mistake, but it was a pretty big mistake to put in your 2003 catalog ISBN numbers are not only wrong, but don't even belong to your company. Next up, Giraffes Giraffes. I've never seen this cover. I believe this is a mock-up cover that was never published. Um, this was published in 2003 and Giraffes Giraffes is the first volume of the how-to series the first volume of the Dr. and Mr. Doris Haggis on Way series uh, the sixth one is coming out this year so every few years they do one. It's an oversized book. It's a great big book. Um, really interesting. Interesting. There's no way to describe it without 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 looking at it. Uh, I do have the 2003 first printing, and I do have it inscribed and signed. And uh, I have on the way a amazing find at a amazing price for what it is. They did events on occasion. And so I found a copy. It's on the way. I don't have it yet. It's signed by Dave Eggers. It's signed by his brother, Toph. And evidently, at the event, they had characters of the from. They had the characters, Doctor and Mister Doris Haggis on Way. So it's also signed by both of them, and is signed by Benny. And uh, it was not inexpensive, but for what it is, it was definitely a an easy thing to buy. I don't know what it's worth never seen anything like it really interesting really looking forward to to uh, to getting that I do not interestingly have the 2008 printing um, and all of the uh, all the books in this series McSweeney's published for a very short time for the first two or two or three books anyway um, they published over a very short period of time and they went right to Simon and Schuster. So when you find giraffes, giraffes, it's almost always going to be Simon and Schuster, not the McSweeney's. Very hard to find. Um, fairly scarce and worth a little bit of money. Um, I've done pretty. I've done pretty well. I found I found a few copies of those, and you hit it at the right time, you get a really nice copy for not a lot of money. Jokes told in heaven about babies by Lucy Thomas, and Lucy Thomas is a pseudonym, sometimes used by Dave Eggers. This book is only like 32 pages. It's like a it's like a two signature paperback. Jokes told in heaven about babies. It is very scarce. It is very it is well let me put it this way. If money is no object, you can find this book. If you want to actually buy it, it's really, really, really hard to find. I've managed to pick up three or four copies at good prices, and 
one copy is not great condition uh, and two copies are in really pretty darn nice condition very hard to find um, gotten lucky on this one rising up and rising down by William T Bowman they do not have a picture as yet so this is just a mock-up text this is the seven volume set um, by William T Bowman seven volumes in a slip case uh, one I never expected to have this at all they go for a, a nice set goes for a thousand dollars or more eight hundred thousand twelve hundred fifteen hundred I took a chance on a set that came up it seemed too good to be true but seemed to be okay four hundred dollars delivered and it is a top notch set in every way um, it would definitely command for 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 an unsigned with no with no volume signed it would command top price um, twelve to fifteen hundred dollars if you took your time to sell it um, the books are perfect the case is perfect uh, it was a really great great buy McSweeney's volume 11 they did not have a cover yet for that one it's an upcoming title McSweeney's 11 was issued in four color variants 9,000 copies of black leatherette heavily stamped in gold uh, 8,400 copies of brown leatherette, uh, also heavily stamped in gold. 1,800 copies of orange, heavily stamped in black. And 900 copies of blue, heavily stamped in gold. And amazingly, I have all four variants. Uh, and I have had offered to me privately uh, from a bookseller I know had offered to me privately a printer's error a brown cover where the cover it put put on backwards and upside down so so on the front the cover is the the front cover is the back cover is upside down if you can follow that the guy I got it from got it signed by Dave Eggers and he said he'd heard there were a few of these out there he would never actually seen one before so the first one he ever saw he signed and I have it. And that is it. Talks a little bit about 826 Valencia. Uh, talks a little bit about uh, a sales program for booksellers. Talks a little bit about McSweeney's. Talks about the three divisions of McSweeney's. <laughs> This is obviously going way back, just three divisions. McSweeney's Quarterly Concern. Then there's McSweeney's Books and McSweeney's Internet Tendency, which is the Internet. Three divisions of McSweeney's. Here we have the McSweeney's Chair Colophone 2003 catalog. So at the time, the Collins imprint wasn't even the official imprint. The Believer wasn't its own official thing, and it had, didn't have official Believer Books imprint. 
They didn't have McMullen's children's imprint. They didn't have them. They, and the believers, what they call believers' books, uh, eventually split up into uh, McSweeney's Rectangulars, McSweeney's Irregulars. Um, they hadn't yet gotten into uh, the Holfen and Grantland and Lucky Peach. And so this is the tree. The tree is still growing branches at this point. So at this point, it's still possible to take a catalog like this and acquire everything in the catalog. The only thing I don't have are two variants of the Sheila Hetty covers that I don't have defaced in whiteout. The only things I don't have in this catalog. I've gone almost an hour now, but that's what's in the catalog, and that's what I've got. And, uh, this is very, very early. I mean, Sweeney is already rolling. He had been a Pulitzer finalist. His second book was a huge success. The Quarterly Concern was a huge success. They just started publishing um, standalone titles with the 2001 catalog, which is the first catalog they ever had. Which 2000 started the press in '98. Had the first catalog in 2001 with like eight titles. And so in 2003, they've actually, the tree has grown a lot. And in 2001, they published six, seven, six or seven of the eight titles. Now here in 2003, their, their, their branches are starting to grow off the tree. And come around 2007 is kind of my, I have titles after 2007, but it's kind of my cut off for where I want to be, which is on the early side of the McSweeney's bibliography. Um, after 2007, you just have so many imprints. Re re rolling releases of books for each imprint is releasing multiple books um, and it's just it just would be impossible to I, I think to isolate you, you could only isolate branches um, but up to 2003 it's uh, it's doable Definitely helps if you have a 2001 catalog to start with. Um, if you started with this, it would be, but uh, a lot of these titles still in print from the 2001 catalog. So it's not as big a leap as you would think. And there we go. That's the McSweeney's 2003 catalog.